We now have a relationship between the mass of a substance, which we can measure on a balance or quantify from the periodic table, and a mole, which is going to help us to quantify the number of particles. This relationship, one mole is equal to the molar mass, can be used to switch between the mass of a substance and the moles. The way that we do that is we take this relationship and we can write it as a proportion. I can rewrite this, that one mole over the molar mass in grams, so that's one representation of that relationship, or we can just flip it around and the molar mass in grams is over one mole. Now we're going to use these proportions to convert back and forth between these two units. And there's a very systematic way to decide which proportion we're going to use. So let's look at example number three. What is the mass of three moles of sodium chloride? So I know that I need to first add up the molar mass of sodium chloride. So I take one sodium and one chlorine and add those together from the periodic table and I find that the molar mass is 58.44 grams. So I have the same relationship, but specifically for sodium chloride. Now, I need to change three moles of sodium chloride into grams. So I wanna multiply this quantity by a proportion that I make from this relationship. So again, I could either use one mole over 58.44 grams or 58.44 grams over one mole. How do we decide? Well, since I'm converting from moles to grams, if I look at my relationship moving from one mole to 58.44 grams, my final answer should be larger than what I'm starting with. So when I pick my proportion, I need to set it up so that when I multiply, I get a larger result. So I need the 58.44 grams, or the molar mass, to be in the numerator of my proportion. So I'm gonna write this at 58.44 grams over one mole. So then in my calculator, I'm just gonna multiply three times 58.44, which is 175.32. Now I know you'll be excited to find out that we are revisiting sig figs. When you round your final answer, you have to count the number of sig figs in the information you were given. It all goes back to the zeros, if you remember from the fall. These zeros are significant because they're at the end of a number and after a decimal point. So this has one, two, three significant figures. So my answer should be rounded to three significant figures. So the answer is 175 grams. All right, let's do another example with this new idea of converting between units. We need to determine the mass of 9.45 moles of aluminum oxide. Just like before, to convert between the two, we need the molar mass. So I need to add up two aluminums and three oxygens from the periodic table, which is 101.96 grams. So I want to start with the measurement that I'm given, 9.45 moles, and again to change between moles and grams, I'm going to multiply by a proportion that I create from this relationship. Just as with example 3, since we're going from moles to grams, moles to grams, our answer should be getting larger. So we would like the molar mass in the numerator, the 101.96, and then one mole in the denominator. When I multiply these two, my calculator reads 963.522. This one's pretty easy. There are one, two, three sig figs in the measurement we're given, so my answer should be rounded to 964 grams. So that was converting moles to mass. What if we're going the opposite direction? So if you skip down here to example number five, we're asking for how many moles are there in 3.7 grams of boron. We do again need the molar mass of boron. This time we don't have to add anything up. We just go to the periodic table since it's an element and the molar mass is 10.81. Same thing, we start with the measurement we're given, 3.70 grams. 
and we need to create a proportion from this relationship. We are going from grams to moles, grams to moles, so since we're moving from 10.81 to 1, our final answer should be smaller than our initial measurement. So this time, I need there to be one mole in the numerator and the molar mass in the denominator to produce a smaller result. Even though this looks a little different than what you're used to, you're really just multiplying this 3.7 by a fraction. So it'll be 3.7 times 1 and then divide it by 10.81 on your calculator. That answer comes out at 0.34227. Again, for significant figures, this 0, because it's at the end of the number and it's after a decimal, does count as a significant figure. So this has three significant figures, so we should round our answer to 0.342 moles. <coughs> All right, last example. How many moles of iron two or iron three oxide are in a 92.2 gram sample? Hopefully you've noticed a little bit of a pattern. The first thing that we have to do is add up the molar mass of two irons and three oxygens, which is 159.70 grams. Now we start again with what we're given, 92.2 grams and we need to create a proportion from this relationship. We are again converting from grams to moles, so our answer should get smaller, not larger. And the only way to produce that result is if the one mole is in the numerator and 159.70 grams is in the denominator. So the way that we do this is we multiply 92.2 times one divided by 159.7 which is 0.577332. Sig figs, again, this one are easy because there isn't any zeros. It has three significant figures, so our answer should also have three. I forgot to say this earlier, but the zeros in the front of a number don't ever count, so we need 0.577 to have three significant figures in our answer. So now we've gone through examples of converting moles to mass and mass to moles. Now I would like you to complete practice number three and practice number four on the next page.